It's 1077 The Bone, baby Huey and Bimbo Jimbo here. Jimbo, we made the trip across the country from the Bay Area. We We're did. here live in New Orleans for WrestleMania week, WrestleMania 34, this Sunday on the WWE Network. <laughs> As the New Day walks by. <laughs> New Day walks by. We just had a fun interview. <laughs> Did just get a little love from New Day? Yeah, we, yeah. we saw them yesterday. We were uh, we were having some Snickers and we were talking okay. WrestleMania 34. But right now, we are so pleased to be joined by the lovely, the talented, the amazing Ooh. broadcaster for WWE, Renee Young. How are you? Welcome to awesome. NOLA. Thank you. I'm doing amazing. I love this city. Um, and we were just saying, uh, with the food it's a slippery slope but man am i having a time yeah no i think if i lived here i mean i as you know <laughs> viewers i already have a little bit of problem you know controlling <laughs> no, myself self-control if Come i on. lived in new orleans i'd be 800 pounds no, i mean it's, it's, it's tough it's the I best know. food city it's there all is. right there but what's the been the vibe like for you i know you said you got in on wednesday yep. and just so take us through what what it's been like in terms of like sort of did you beat the calm you know before the storm I kind of deal did so yeah I, we got in wednesday wednesday was like my day of chaos of like girl stuff that I had to do get my nails done try to figure out some semblance of a tan um, <laughs> get in some kind of a workout just kind of get situated a little bit because um, I knew that Wednesday was kind of my only real day to get that done um, which was also the only day to just kind of like hang out and enjoy New Orleans a little bit before the chaos sort of started yeah um, and then yeah now we're kind of in the swing of things and getting ready for Hall of Fame a little bit later today uh, yeah. and then yeah getting a uh, Kind of sorted with that. Got to get a dress, get that figured out, and then, uh, yeah, get ready for Sunday. Well, I was going to say, just for you, for uh, Hall of Fame tonight, who are you most excited to see go in tonight into ceremony? <sighs> Mark Henry for me. Really? Yeah, I love Mark. He's a good friend. So I think, like, seeing him and, you know, seeing him and Big Show together, I think will be really, really cool. So, yeah, definitely Mark for me. So w with that, as you said, he's a friend. So how, how privy were you to sort of get to see sort of his – reaction to this i mean obviously probably not live in the moment when he found out or yeah. maybe i, I don't know but i was not with him no but, unfortunately I, mean, you know, I was not <laughs> but that, i mean that's sort of the thing you see in like all these other sports too is like when you get the call yeah. and stuff like that they, what it felt like and just so what's it been like as one of your friends like talking to him about how he feels going in i mean what a huge yeah, huge thing for you know him. what i actually haven't had a chance to fully talk to him like i sent him a text a congratulatory text but i haven't even run into him out here yet um so yeah i haven't got to have that conversation but i mean just knowing mark i know He's going to give a hell of a speech. I'm yeah. hoping he's going to oh wear the God. salmon Probably gonna jacket. Probably going to make everybody cry. I, oh, 100%. Yeah. Without question, Mark's going to make people cry. Yeah. I don't know what he's got up his sleeve for tonight. Or, yeah, that's tonight. Yeah, schedule. Yeah, all over the place, I do. I'm, I'm I totally wait. with. There's so much going on here for WrestleMania 34 in New Tons. Orleans. Uh, how many WrestleManias is this for you now? This is six for me. Wow, that was my I quick. Know. It is so crazy how quickly the time goes by. I feel like it was like, in like my mind, it feels like I've worked here for like two, three years. I can't okay. believe that it's been double that. Yeah. Triple that. It's a lot. It's it's been an incredible run for yeah. you, and we're so happy Thanks. that you've you know stuck around. And you keep I feel like you keep getting more and more opportunities. Part of my background is uh, in the NBA and stuff like that. Okay. So, and uh, this is meant as the utmost compliment. But I look at you as sort of like a Doris Burke okay. for professional wrestling. All right. And I just hell I, yeah, Doris. Yeah, she's terrific. I think you're awesome, and she is now getting these opportunities that have sort of never been afforded to yeah. women before. As she's now an analyst, you know, on the biggest game the biggest stage and everything yeah. like that that is something that as as a fan of the product that when I watch you and I see how gifted you are with the microphone and everything like mm -hmm. that is that something that you aspire to could we see a Renee Young as one of the voices of say a Smackdown Live or a Monday Night Raw or whatever yeah I mean I think that that opportunity um is some, so it's it's not something that I initially ever started out thinking that I wanted to do. And then I did dip my toe in doing it a little bit, doing NXT and mm -hmm. doing main event. Um, You're very good. I don't, but I didn't feel like I was. Um, I felt like it was, uh, it just wasn't my natural headspace. But I feel like now the more time that I've spent in the company and the more comfortable I am kind of knowing the ins and outs of navigating what exactly it would entail to do commentary. And especially with uh, my good pal over here, Corey Graves, who's just over there. <laughs> He's in and camouflage. Was, I was going to say, nice Yeah, exactly. He is in camouflage right now. You know, if it was like something with him, uh, him and I just have a natural rapport. So it would, yeah. it would just be an interesting dynamic. So when I was done doing commentary, I was kind of like, whew, breath of relief. I don't know what I got into with that. But now that that time has kind of passed, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I would be into trying it again and just kind of seeing where it goes and knowing like what my role is in the company now is different than it was then. And I think my comfortability is a lot different as well. So I'd be more into trying stuff. I think I felt like I was on a bit of a tightrope at the time yeah. and it would be. Yeah, I think my, it's turned into a bit more of a 
wider uh, I mean, walkway. <laughs> we're in a history-making time for, for women in the country and in WWE especially. I mean, I think it's, uh, if there was a time, I, I, I would say it is is now. But I should knock on Vince's door. Oh, Absolutely. I, I, I think I so. I should knock on his door. And you tell him, there's, I, think, I don't think we're alone in this, but you have a <laughs> lot of fans that want to see that happen. Thanks. So I think that would be awesome. How did you get into this in general, though? What, what was your background, and how um, did uh, you end up in this crazy world? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, interesting things where you, like, you just kind of end up where you're supposed to end up, I think. Like, I wasn't necessarily on my radar when I was, like, a kid to be like, oh, that's what I want to do working for WWE, but I always knew that I wanted to be a performer and an entertainer. Um, so I went more of the acting comedy route. Like, right out of high school, I did Second City, and I was taking a bunch yeah. of acting classes, and I went more that aspect of it and then got into hosting more in, like, a roundabout way of merely a means to make money because when I was waiting to audition for acting roles and stuff in Toronto... Um, I was like, I, I can just take a camera and host something on my own and make my own content. And then that just kind of led me to a plethora of different things. It led me to working for, for Sports Network in Canada yeah. and turning that into like a comedy sports thing. They've all been like little melds of things. And then it started to be a wrestling show there that I was doing to then uh, getting the call to come work here. Uh, and yeah, What was even, that like? It was interesting because um, I didn't know, I had no idea what I was going to be doing. Mm -hmm. I figured that I would be coming in to do something more similar to what I was doing in Canada as like a hosting role and like doing more of like a talking smack or whatever, which eventually yeah. we got yeah. there. But you know, when I first started, I wasn't really sure exactly what my spot was going to be when I was doing backstage interviews. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And kind of becoming more of a character a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was... Uh, it was an interesting thing when I got that call to come in here and uh, I went into my audition, which I thought was quite terrible. I didn't think I did that well because I, I, I did. They put me through like the gamut that did I they had make to, you sell a pen. They made me sell. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a pen. <laughs> it wasn't a pen. It was like um, like a battery box or something. Okay. They would sell me this. And I was like, oh, my God, no, <laughs> please don't let me do this. But I did like do that. Um, and then I did do like a talk show kind of set up and then I did a commentary run through and that was um, a terrifying moment for me. So f for anyone that's just curious, so when you got the call, was it something like, do you send like an audition tape to WWE or did they find you or? No, yeah, it was, um, so we, the, the, sh the network that I worked for in Canada yeah. was in direct relation with WWE. So okay. they knew the show that I was doing. They knew that I knew the content and the brand and everything. It's like an affiliation so, with WWE. Yeah, right exactly. Gotcha. So they, yeah, it was a kind of little friend passed off my contract was up there and I moved on over here you mentioned uh, talking smack a moment ago oh yes and so I, I have to I have to bring up the I mean the most you know infamous went viral moment in talking smack history which was the Miz yeah. and Daniel Bryan going at it what was that like for you how much of that was just off the rails like real in the moment what can you tell us about that? A, because it was, it was like, it's so memorable. It was cra It is very memorable. And it was like, it was such a cool moment to be a part of, especially for somebody like Miz and seeing where that kind of catapulted him again. Mm -hmm. Like it was just such a interesting medium, I guess, because we were pretty new at doing Talking Smack when that happened and working within the like, all right, here we go. We're going to be live and let's kind of see what is going to happen. Um, but yeah, it definitely got a little hot under the collar. I think I was like actually read and nervous I'm like oh my god what's happening like I was like so like wrapped up in the whole thing and like it was just it was <laughs> kind of like Aaron Andrews moment with like when Richard Sherman's like going off in a post game <laughs> yeah. interview you were hang yeah. you're trying to hang like, with though and I remember you're like right? this is really not what it's supposed to be about yeah 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 so how much of that was I mean were you trying to sort of save it or were you like what was your mindset or were you just like just you yeah, know what I mean, let I him guess, go I guess it was like a thing of like trying to save it Trying to save the situation of what was happening, also knowing like what a sensitive subject everything was for Brian at the time too, of him not being able to wrestle and where he was at. And I knew that that was such, obviously a very sensitive subject for him. So like as a friend, I wanted to swoop in to be like, hey man, yeah. leave my buddy alone. Like totally. not a cool situation. Um, so it was it was kind of more from that standpoint of like seeing how real those emotions were and where they were taking it. I, I didn't know what was so how happen, how real was, like, was that? I mean, in between the two of them, like afterward. I mean, oh yeah, I mean you know it's a thing. It's like you, was it just kind of sort of like pushing one another to sort of find this level, or was it like, hey dude, you crossed a line? Um, I, you know, I think that they're both um, like the utmost professionals, and uh, you know they they kind of handle those things. Those things seem to pop up here and there you know, throughout people's careers, so they just kind of handle it in a way that uh, best suits them. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, just so, just speaking of Daniel Bryan, okay, so yes. within the last couple of weeks, he got cleared oh to compete God. again. So just your thoughts of 
your former co-host, uh, now being able to compete this Sunday at WrestleMania. I could not be happier for Brian and for Bree yeah. and for their whole family. I mean, it's just such a cool moment. I was in the locker room in Dallas when uh, the text came out or like the, the WWE update, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. I like freaked out and everyone in the room was like, what? I'm like, Brian just got cleared, holy crap. So yeah, it was like such a, in a like an elated moment of like seeing that dream come back for him and yeah. like seeing that perseverance of him like really wanting to get back in the ring finding a way uh, and then he's there and he's done it and now he gets to be back in the ring wrestle in wrestlemania like it's just it's such a full circle fairy tale story it, it makes me so happy for him i can't even imagine well especially because he's coming back to new orleans where what, yes. four years ago WrestleMania you know, won. Yes. i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think that's just such yeah. a cool moment for the fans and i think it's just that's going to be probably one of the highlights of this an, weekend yeah oh my god without question it was just such an unexpected thing that i think everyone just took it off the table and yeah. then to have that flip back around and open that door it's like Wait, WWE gets Daniel Bryan in the ring again? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's in and, and, and not just Angle? for like a one-off. This is not like, no, a, like yeah. oh, I'm coming back for this thing. No, he's, it's he's not back. a novelty match. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he's back. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. Because even that, that first night in the ring with, with Kevin and Sami Zayn, yeah. when he like fired up, it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Bryan's not messing no. around right now. He's got all this pent and, up, uh, you know, energy and emotions. Crazy. And, and as weird as it is to say, it was, for me as a, such a huge fan of, of Bryan and everything like that, that to see him sort of take the pop-up power bomb in the apron, I was like, "Oh, oh my god, I know. he can do this though!" Ooh. Like that—that that like, to me was like, "Okay, that, so yeah, he's back," you know? Ooh, that scared um, me. So we got a couple more for you. So Renee, I just—I have to ask you this. So for—I mean, we know how much of an awesome job you do, but for just kind of like maybe the casual fan out there, I think. For you, what do you describe how important your role is? Because I see you're like our generation's Mean Gene Okerlund. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love that. That's so, so sweet. So I'm just in, mean, mean Jane. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, that is my middle name. So I'm just <laughs> curious, like, describe how important your role is in those interview segments and just, I think, what you add to just the whole TV viewing experience. Yeah, I, you know, for me, doing like doing backstage interviews and trying to trying to take a page out of Gene's book yeah. and being able to add something because I mean, a lot of times, I mean, I know the backstage interviewers we get this whole rap of being robots and not having any emotion, and you know, somehow that's kind of done by design in mm. some odd way. But uh, I do feel like being able to get like sort of that little bit ahead of that curve is that I do get to have these reactions and I do get to kind of have moments yeah. with people backstage but it's done in such a subtle way mm -hmm. that I think it does help of like I, it's so funny I always get like message people are like ooh you, do you really watch the way Roman Reigns walks off I'm like yeah it's on purpose <laughs> I do that on purpose is that for real um, but yeah, it's like just to be able to help somebody or to help somebody to guide somebody along that might not be yes. as comfortable in a situation like that and to let them know that like I like if it, all else fails We'll figure it out. Yes. We'll all, yeah. We're all walking safe. Walking through it. Exactly. I'll walk you guys through it, get you there. But, yeah, and then even being able to, like, step in and, and take, like, you know, doing an interview with, with a Cena or, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's – I don't really know how to like describe like my importance of what I do. I like I can tell you how much fun I have doing those things. Of like even like me coming from more of an acting background, it's nice to feel like you can give something back to somebody a little mm -hmm. bit and be there with them rather than forward. well, it's like ra rather than just asking a question and like being vacant and not paying yeah. attention. It's nice to be there with somebody and give them something back. Um, I would get that a lot working with Paul Heyman when I first started because him and I would have all these different backstage things that we would do and it get super super intense. But we always had this thing where we would just kind of give it back to each other even if it was just like looking each other in the eyes like certain facial things that we would do but yeah it, th those are like the more fun things for me when I get to or Samoa Joe's talking trash to me <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome jerk. I know big jerk <laughs> <A> jerk <laughs> listen Renee I know we're uh, you got a busy schedule yeah. ahead of you so we want to thank you so much for making the time today yeah. so we encourage all of our listeners tune in this Sunday for Wrestlemania 34 live on the WWE Network subscribe www.com and good luck this weekend Thanks. we're big fans you're kill it. yeah and you're gonna Hopefully. do an awesome job if Keep not uh, i'll send you my resume wwe <laughs> doris burke right here <laughs> Renee Young. you thank call you. me uh, mean doris yeah, yeah mean doris mean jane you're, you're doing great work thank you so much thank Renee. you, thank you.